Good morning. Still early spring. I'm back out in the Blue Mountain Birch Cove Lakes wilderness area. Uh, very light agenda today. Well, okay. This video will only be a very simple topic. I'm going to make coffee. Surprise. But the coffee I'm going to make is something that's trending right now in some of the commercial coffee stores. I won't say too much more about it until we get to the time to make coffee. But it's, it's just, I can't believe it. It is so beautiful out here today. You know, I, I'll admit, my favorite season of the year is the fall. It's still warm, the bugs have died off. Actually, the bugs haven't even started yet because it's still a little bit cold here. It's warm, it, you know, bugs have died off, everything is still, leaves are still on the tree for the most part, and I love the fall. But maybe it was the, just the long winter that we had that is making me appreciate these beautiful spring days. And you really have to get out to enjoy them. You know, I'm still not seeing the real signs of spring popping up. There's no new growth, no new plants. Uh, yeah, that's, that's just the way it is. It's still a little bit early, still around freezing. Actually, I'm still carrying my gloves around with me. So that's all I'm doing today is gonna to be making some coffee, something a little different, something interesting. Hopefully, I do expect I'll find a few things to share with you along the way. So if you're interested, keep watching. Absolutely stunning. Look at that water. It's like a mirror, not a breeze. This is the type of morning you want to wake up and sit by the lake with your cup of coffee and just enjoy the peace and tranquility. Wind will probably pick up a little bit as the air warms up, but right now, just stunning. Worth a painting. Question of the day. What caused this damage to this dead oak tree? Let me just move around the other side because the damage is even more extensive on the other side. that all the way up if you know or even think you know put your answer in the comment section So it's probably been about three hours since I last had the camera on and the reason being is, is I actually did bring a few products out that I wanted to test out here. Not making reviews today, just testing them out. That's part of what I do when I'm out here and then eventually they will come to a review. So it, I've been doing a lot of work off of camera and I also made myself some lunch. So it's actually late afternoon but I really want to make this coffee because this will be the first time I try making this coffee while I'm out here in the woods. So I've made it three times at home and it's worked out. I don't see why it wouldn't work out here in the woods. The only thing is, is I don't have the same kitchen implements to make it with. So it's gonna be a little bit different. So what is it? What's so special about this coffee? So in the opening, I said, this is a coffee that is trending in uh, certain coffee shops around the world. I mean, there's only one coffee shop around the world and that would be Starbucks. So this is gonna be based on a drink that's newly introduced at Starbucks known as Olietto. And Olietto is a double shot of espresso with steamed milk and you're ready for this, olive oil. That's the other ingredient in this. And you're thinking, how, how can that possibly work? Well, you do have to try it. That's the only thing I'm gonna say is the olive oil lends a nice smoothness and mouthfeel to the coffee, something that uh, you wouldn't believe you don't get an olive oil flavor on it at all. It just kind of makes everything richer. That's the best way to describe it. So I actually did find the recipe that Starbucks uses for making theirs. Mine's going to be only slightly different. Well, okay, there's, there's going to be a few things different about it because otherwise I wouldn't just be able to make it out here in the woods. So I will put their recipe and my recipe, if you're interested, in the video description if you want to try this for yourself. So their recipe calls for one third cup or 80 milliliters of oat milk. So oat milk to start, right? So now, yes, you can use regular cow milk if you want. I'm going to be using almond milk. And the reason I'm using almond milk uh, and nut milk instead of oat milk is because oat milk is high in carbs. I tried this with regular milk. It worked out okay. But when I tried it with the almond milk, 
<laughs> it was uh, at another level. It just, the flavors complement each other. So I'll be using almond milk instead of oat milk, one third cup, 80 milliliters, one tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil. Now Starbucks uses a specific brand in theirs. It's called Partana, P-A-R-T-A-N-N-A. -N -N -A. Uh, it's rather expensive. I wasn't going to buy it just to make this video on, so I use the uh, olive oil that I buy at Costco, which is a, a higher-end brand as far as I'm concerned, and it worked out well. And two shots of espresso. Now, it, uh, Starbucks uses their blonde roast, so it's a very light roasted coffee, but they use a double shot of that with this. So the, co the idea is that you warm the milk and the olive oil together. Actually, you steam them and you froth them up. And then you pour your double shot of espresso on top of that. And that's the whole coffee. It's actually very simple to make in the coffee shop. At home, what I did is I made my double shot of espresso and I was able to warm the nut milk up with the olive oil in it. And I had this small electric, I don't know what you call it. It's a buzzy spinny thing, a mixer. It's a frother. That's exactly what they call it, the milk frother. It's a battery operated device where I could put in and just froth the milk up and then pour the coffee in on top of that. Well, obviously I don't have that out here in the woods. So I will be using something very bushcrafty. I'll show it to you in a minute. Alternatively, uh, you could use, well, I could have brought that battery operated device out here to the woods to make it work, but I, I, I just like the idea of trying to do this in a bushcraft kind of way if I could. And I think it, well, it does work. I did try it at home. It works reasonably well. Alternatively, I guess if I had brought a French press, I could use the French press itself, pump it to froth the milk up. I've done that in other videos and it works. Little, little finicky. You just have to do it right so you don't scald yourself with hot milk or hot coffee when you do it. So that would work. Um, yeah, so those are the things. Now, the other change I'm making from the original recipe is I don't have an espresso machine for the woods. Well, I do. I have the Nespresso one that takes the little pods, and I figured by the time I pumped through two of those that it probably start to cool off. So I wanted to keep everything relatively hot and try to get it all put together while it was still warm enough to be drinkable. So rather than using espresso, I'm going to be using a mocha pot. Now, I know some people often refer to them as stovetop espresso makers. They're not truly espresso makers. They're actually a percolator that makes a really strong cup of coffee that's as close to espresso as you can get without being espresso. That's probably the best way to describe it. I know I've got my friend Rob Young is probably cringing right now. You can't call that espresso. It's not. A, it's not. It's not espresso. <laughs> I'm not claiming that it is, but it's a good strong coffee. So that's where I'm going with this. I'm going to be making uh, uh, four ounces of espresso or sorry, mocha pot coffee, and I'll be mixing the rest of it. So, uh, okay. So what I've got to do is I've got my lo-fi stove here and I've just got to collect up a little bit of wood so I can heat things up. So I'll be the order I'm going to do things in to try to get it all done quickly is to heat the milk and olive oil, pour that into my double wall mug, and then put the mocha pot on so that it's perking while I'm trying to froth up the milk with my bushcraft item. All right, let me get set up and we'll see if this works. All right, let's get this coffee going. And what do I need to do here first? So, okay. What I've done just to kind of make sure that my timing is good is that I preloaded my mocha pot with the coffee and the water so it'll go on top of my stove as soon as I'm ready to put it on and hopefully uh, the timing will be pretty good. Now, I don't have Starbucks Blonde Roast Coffee, but I am using Rampage Riot, which is their medium roast coffee, and it's always worked for me, So, and it works for me at home. So that's the coffee I'm using here. Now, I have my pot into this little pot. I'm going to be pouring one-third cup of almond milk and one tablespoon of olive oil, roughly, And I'm now going to put this on top of the flame. And it, the flame, as you can see, let's see, turn it up a little bit. Probably going to have to put a little bit more in there. But I don't want a high heat. I just want that to start to heat up. And I'll have to keep a close eye on it. So when it starts to get hot, the milk and the olive oil, I'm going to pour it into my double wall mug. This is a, a titanium double wall mug I have from Keith. And here's the magic implement that's going to make everything work for me today. This is a, a little item that's called, well, all right, pronunciation, I'm not uh, sure on, var, tavar, 
T-V-A-R or T-V-A-R-E. It's a Norwegian whisk, basically what it is. And I've experimented with making a number of these, large ones, small ones, full-on whisks. And uh, this one works really well to go inside of a coffee cup like this and blend everything together. Once I blast up or take that heat, oh, it's already heating up, good. As soon as that starts to heat, I'll put it in there and then I'll throw the other one on top of the, or the mocha pot on top of the stove just to make sure. I think I need probably a few little more pieces of wood here to throw in to make sure the stove is up to the task. I should be able to do it. Things are starting to heat up. I can actually start the process inside here. And I do have a lid to keep the, that warm as well. Milk you don't boil because it scalds. I don't know about nut milks, if, you, if that's an issue or not, but. And the whole point of this whisk or tavar is to blend the olive oil and the nut milk together so that they stay homogenized and get, well, as reasonably frothy as you can make them. And it's almost boiling. Actually, it is boiling. All right. Let's get that into this cup. I'll start working on that. At the same time, I'll put the mocha pot on, turn the flame up, and start doing my magic like if I can. There's a nice level spot. I find spinning this actually works pretty good. It's, it's a reasonably good way of frothing or blending stuff together. Actually, it's frothing up very nicely. How am I going to show that? Can you see it? Can you see how well it's frothing up in there? Hopefully that's showing up. Now, I think I'll just take the var out for a minute, put the lid on, because I got that done a little faster than I expected. And now I'm just waiting on my mocha pot to produce some coffee for me. Turn it right up. Maybe throw a few more pieces of wood in. What I found the last time I did this is I have to be careful because you don't want it roaring hot by the time the mocha pot comes to the percolation phase because then it just spatters everywhere. You have to turn it down in a hurry. So the easiest way to do it to keep an eye on it is to open the lid up and keep an eye on it. And the moment it starts, I'll turn it down and then even take it off. Maybe I'll reposition the camera and see if I can't cap capture that happening. Oh, look at that. And as this pours out, search and rescue helicopter comes over top. Maybe they smelt the coffee brewing up. I don't want it to spurt. There we go. Okay, it's done. Turn that down. All right, last step is to, you can probably, you must be able to hear that search and rescue helicopter it's right over top of me right now. Let me just give this another little spin. actually be impressed with how well this works in terms of blending and frothing up that milk. Pour this in. And that's it. It's done. Not all that hard, right? All right, let's reposition the camera and do a taste test. All right, let's do the taste test for the copycat Starbucks Olietto. Oh my goodness, that's smooth. You wouldn't believe it. You wouldn't believe that there's olive oil inside of that. It's just, it, there's no olive oil flavor, but what there is is a smoothness and a richness and a bit of a mouth feel. Uh, obviously that's given to it by the olive oil itself. Now, uh, the almond milk has its own flavor. It blended well with the flavor of the olive oil and the coffee itself, which is obviously when you make a, a, a good, strong mocha pot coffee that has a lot of strength, this smoothed that out nicely. 
Not quite espresso. I'll make this at home. Well, I have made it at home with espresso, but it also works with the mocha pot. Oh my goodness, that was good. The only challenge for doing this, and as I mentioned, this is the first time I did it out in the woods, was trying to time everything just right so that everything remained hot but so I could put it together when it was still reasonably hot. Uh, and it worked. It worked out better. In fact, I was came together a little faster than I even expected it to. Star of the show, though, was this little device right here, the VAR, Tavar, whatever it's called. I've used these before, and I used this at home to practice with it before coming out today just to make sure it would work. Can you see what I've made? Can you see idea? Okay, let's, let's give you a hint. Does that look familiar now? All right. If you're interested, I'll actually show you how to make one. Just let me know in the, in the comment section if you want to know how to make your own var or tvar. And if I have any Norwegian friends watching, and I know I have because they've commented, please give me some cup of phonetic pronunciation to tell me which is the right or what is the right, if I'm not saying it right either way, way of uh, pronouncing that, T-V-A-R-E. Okay, whisk. We'll just call it a bushcraft whisk for lack of a better term. That worked out really well. Oh, I'm going to sit back and enjoy this. Okay, something different, right? I like trying different ways of making coffee. I've had a few suggestions from viewers for ways of making coffee out here in the woods. I will be trying them. I think I can pull them off uh, and make it out here. It'll be different. I do have to do some adaptations because um, of uh, the way you do it out in the woods as opposed to the way you might do it at home, but I think it'll work. It'll be fun to try anyway. So if you have any suggestions, please put those in the comments section below. But I guess that's all I have for you today. Until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.